When I'm making my chairs, I use uh, bent lamination forms quite a bit to get the curved pieces that I need. So stick around and I will show you how I make one of them. These chairs by William Morse were a big influence on me when I went to make my first chair design. I played around with this design quite a bit over the years and ended up with a set of dining room chairs that I make. Recently I received an order for these dining room chairs, but we wanted to change the backrest to be more like some other chairs that I've made in the past with a bent lamination slats instead of the upholstery. So working with the client, we just drew up a design and played around with the look until they were happy with it. But I needed to make a new form so we can make these slats. Using the back pattern as a template, I draw in the ergonomic curve for the back rests to have contiguous lines with the back. I use MDF to make these forms and laminate a bunch of blocks up to get the thickness that I need for the forms. Trace out the shape needed down the middle of this first block, and this will become the king form, so I'll take my time in cutting it out and fairing it out with spoke shaves and cleaning it up the best I can so it can be used as a pattern for the rest of the form. It's important to take into consideration the thickness of the material you'll be laminating in these forms. So with the compass set to that thickness, I'll scribe a line referencing off of the smooth curve down the length, keeping the compass at a 90 degree angle or perpendicular to the curve at any given point. Some spring back can be expected when you're doing a bent lamination like this, but using this equation really helps take the headache out of it and you can more accurately draw out your curve to get the shape that you want. Following the method that we used to make the first half of the pattern, we'll cut out the second side and fare it out with spoke shaves just as the first and get ready to use as a reference for the rest of the blocks. After the rest of the blocks have been cut out and roughly shaped, I can tack two together with glue and attach them to the king pattern and then take them to a pattern following bit on the router table and clean them up so that they will match in the same profile. MDF dust is nasty stuff, so I try to keep a vacuum hose as close to the bit as possible when I'm running it through the pattern following bit. Then I, I threw up all the sides and then it's just rinse and repeat for more. Once I've achieved the final thickness for the forms, I will set them in a set of clamps and let them glue up. first half of the form glued together, I'll move on to the adjoining side and then rinse and repeat.
Once the sides of the forms have been glued up, I can take them out of the clamps and clean them up and get them ready for use. I like to add registration blocks to both sides of the form. It helps a lot when you're gluing things together to help everything align and come together smoothly and squarely. To help the forms hold up under all that pressure and keep it from blowing out, I'll run a few bolts through each end. To further help the form hold together, I'll put a backer board on either side of the form and that helps spread the clamping pressure out. MDF is thirsty stuff and it takes quite a bit of finish to, to get a good coat on there, but it's really worth it to help keep the glue from sticking and damaging the form. Once the form is finished, it's time for the fun part, to mill up some slats and put it in there and try it out. Wrap the forms in a clear plastic drawer liner material to help keep the glue from sticking to them and ruining them. 
It takes a lot of practice to get just the right amount of glue on a slat when you're gluing it up to get just the right adhesion but not too much squeeze out. This one turned out just perfect. So there's a lot of different ways to get the curved pieces that you need for your furniture. You can uh, steam bend them, you can resaw them from a thicker piece of wood, or you can do the bent laminations like I showed you to get your skids for your rocking chairs or your, your back legs or you know whatever your project that you're working on is. It, it all depends on the attributes of the wood and what, what your project calls for to find the best method for you. One case in point is this set of cafe chairs that I'm making. Uh, they have a, a really scooped uh, back seat or back rest to the seat. And I, I didn't have uh, an eight inch wide chunk of, of zebra wood to resaw to get this back. And uh, zebra wood is really poorly suited to steam bending. So the best method for me on that project was to mill up a bunch of strips and put it in the form and, and glue it up. So do a little research, find out what your wood is capable of doing and what your project calls for and, and try and figure out what the best method is for to get that curved part. Um, I hope this video was helpful in learning how to put one of these forms together. And thanks for watching, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys again.